Thank you so much for joining my Instagram Live. My name is Makita Waterman, or better yet, Yeg Marketer, and I am here to talk to you about Generation Z marketing. I felt that it was really important for me to start off the season um, now that summer is on its way, and a lot of Gen Z um, people, hi, how are you, are going to be purchasing a lot more products and services. Generation Z, it's a pretty big market. I think a lot of the baby boomers and millennial business owners neglect um, or fail to realize how much purchasing power and online power this age group has. So when I say Gen Z, I'm talking about teenagers to I think, um, I think 10 years old to about 21, 22. And that's who I'm gonna be talking about today. So I'm gonna get straight into it. I know your time is precious. So Generation Z online ads are very, very powerful, especially on places like TikTok. And I say that because this age group spends a lot of time on this app, or even if you do advertisements on Instagram or Google ads or YouTube, you really want to do a couple of things. Uh, some of the things that I'm noticing with Generation Z advertising is transitions, meaning quick 15 or 30 second uh, commercials, so to say, and they have to be they have to be exciting, they have to have fun, there has to be a lot of creativity in this content. In addition to that, what I recommend too with your Gen Z marketing, there has to be a lot of action, there has to be a lot of quick images and quick changes in these videos. And if you're not gonna go the kind of like action movie route when it comes to your advertising for this age group, I highly recommend that you add some comedy or you do a lot of research on Gen Z pop culture and things that matter the most to this age group because you want to grab these um, people's attention within the first three, two to three seconds rather than five seconds for adults because their mind is very, very fast. They absorb information much quicker than adults, so on and so forth. So some of the platforms that I recommend that you do for advertising on Gen Z is definitely TikTok, definitely I'd say YouTube, but just make sure again that you understand your audience, the age group, the culture, the religion, the subculture where they live, and just make sure that you're tailoring your retail ads or whatever it is that you're selling to Gen Z. Now, when you're doing ads, you want to do two different things. You have to ask yourself, am I targeting Generation Z or am I targeting the parents of Generation Z? Because if you're targeting the parents of Gen Z, your content has to be a little bit different, but still geared towards solving a problem um, towards this age group, because you would then be focusing on millennials and baby boomers with respect to ads for this age group. Now, Gen Z interest, based on my research that I've done over the years and even more on TikTok, Generation Z, they're really, really uh, focused on companies who, who stand for something. Um, the environment, um, politics, um, race issues, uh, gender inequality, um, even economic groups and how your company is contributing to changing um, people's uh, certain situations. Hi, thanks for joining. And so when you're targeting uh, the Generation Z uh, content, again, they focus, they are very, very supportive and they want to see what your company does with respect to your um, community involvement with the environment. Um, what do you stand for? Do you stand for race relations? Do you stand for inequality? Do you stand for making the environment better. So Generation Z, they are very, very proud to get on their platforms on TikTok, Instagram, and really tell what they feel. So they want to see the companies also have a vested interest. Hi, thanks for joining um, in changing the world. So if you have a small business or maybe you have a retail store or a media agency and you're trying to target to Generation Z, I think that's between the age of 10 to 25, I might be wrong on that, but in that age group, stand for something um, and do it genuinely because Generation Z, they're very, very smart. They call out, I call them online warriors. These people will research you. They will find where you work. They will find where you live. And if you don't, if you say you stand for something and they find something else on the internet or if somebody exposes your company or you, they will put that out there. So 
whatever community involvement or whatever issue that you are sharing that your company represents or you're you know doing donations make sure it's genuine because generation z they can they can tell which companies are just doing things they call it for the clout um, which basically means just to get likes and get more customers and they can tell when a customer is very very passionate about a cause so just be careful uh, with that as well um, generation z their mindset they want to be respected they want they actually work together online so if there is an issue that is important to gen z they will work together and do petitions online they will get people out of schools they will get a teacher out of a job and they will work together uh, by doing all these kind of online initiatives on the platforms and in groups and things like that to get things done um, they were very very powerful on TikTok. Uh, Generation Z, when Donald Trump last year was saying they were going to ban TikTok, a lot of them were signing petitions and um, a lot of them started uh, spamming his uh, Twitter account during the whole period of him saying he was going to shut down TikTok and he was going to do this and that. Generation Z online, and these are not people that know each other, they just come together online and they work to create change. So um, other than wanting to be respected, they want to be taken seriously. They don't want to be reminded that they're Gen Z. They want to feel as if you're speaking to them through your advertising and through your content as if they are an adult because even though they're 10 years old, a lot of them feel like they have a mature mindset. And I don't blame them because they were born with Instagram and tablets and you know the, the best iPhone version that millennials or baby boomers ever has seen when it first came out. So um, when you're speaking to Gen Z, whether it's through um, an article, a blog, a video, an advertisement, speak to them as if you're speaking to an adult because they don't want to feel as if you think that you're here because your company is owned by adults and they're here because they're just children or teenagers. So try to think about that. Um, they're very, very big on speaking out on issues that they care about, that they're passionate about, that they agree with, that they don't agree with. So when you're doing your ads, maybe you can take a Pepsi Cola approach and kind of do an ad that, of course, uh, markets your product or service, but maybe it's backed to some kind of a, a positive cause that will create positive change and make sure that it's, it's something that Gen Z cares about because, again, they're looking to invest and ask their parents to buy from companies that stand for something. Um, the other thing I want to say is Gen Z spending. Uh, Gen Z spending is in the billions. I know I do a lot of, you know, like these marketing trends and marketing statistics every once in a while in my carousels. And hey, Rob, how are you? Uh, the interesting thing about um, this age group, Generation Z, is uh, last year during the pandemic, their spending power was in the billions. So a lot of you are saying, how can a teenager, a 10 year old, or a 25 year old? who might have not finished college or went to school, how are they spending in the billions worldwide? Well, obviously their parents, their caregivers, their grandparents, their um, godfathers, their god sisters, so when, godmother, sorry. So when you're doing your ads and you're targeting this young age group, just make sure that you are potentially targeting their parents. So you can do ads like McDonald's, do ads to Gen Z, or you can do ads to the caregiver, the parents, the grandparents, whoever's taking care of them or spending money on them uh, as well. So there's two advertising things that you can do for this, uh, these groups of people. The other thing with Gen Z, the reason why I think that their purchasing power was very powerful last year during a pandemic and a global economic downturn is they live on social media. Um, I do a lot of TikTok um, kind of surveys and I kind of gauge what they like, what they don't like. And a lot of them spend a lot of time on TikTok and Instagram. And they, they say that they spend most of their time on TikTok and Instagram making purchasing decisions. So they spend hours on their phones, they're texting, they're on, um, uh, what's that app called? They're on uh, different apps uh, other than TikTok and they're communicating with each other, they're in group chats, they're looking at ads, they're looking at companies, they're following celebrities, they're following influencers in their cities and across the globe. And a lot of them are uh, making their decisions by streaming online just as much as adults um, spend time on television. So 
that's it for Gen Z. I know this was a little bit short, but I'll just quickly recap. If you're doing online ads for Generation Z on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, make sure that your advertisements are quick, there are transitions, there's some humor, there's movement. If you have the budget or the creativity, try to make your advertisements like action movies within 15 or 30 seconds because you have to grab their attention pretty quickly, actually much more quickly than an adult if you ask me. Um, other than the online ads, Gen Z interests are environmental issues, global issues, racial issues, and gender inequality issues, um, all kinds of issues. They're into that kind of like green, green roots kind of stuff. Um, and they really, really are passionate about uh, what they're passionate about. And they're not afraid to express that online. So if you're still not really, con not convinced, but if you're still mis have a misunderstanding of this age group, spend a lot of time on TikTok. Even if you open an account and you don't post anything, just spend time on the For You page, which is the equivalent of Instagram's Explore page, and find out what they're talking about. Right now on TikTok, uh, one of the big things that they're talking about is um, uh, there's a new uh, video out by Montero. I think his name is Little Nas X. And one of the big issues that a lot of Gen Z are having with this is, you know, Little Nas's X new video has this whole thing between heaven and the devil, and you put out these new shoes that say Satan, and it's just some really weird stuff with this uh, rapper. And that's all I'm seeing on the For You page is Gen Z creating videos about why they don't agree with this whole Satan thing that this rapper is uh, boldly doing in his music. They don't like the shoes that he has going out. Um, and when um, TikTok was going to be uh, potentially closed in the U.S., they were voicing their opinions on that. So if you want to get an understanding of what pop culture things they're concerned about right now, TikTok is probably one of the best places to go. Um, yes, TikTok's really, really good. Uh, other than that, their mindset, they want to be respected. They work together in global groups to do petitions and make things happen. Um, they are big on um, doing research on companies and people. That's how they make their purchasing decisions. Uh, if they like your company, they'll probably Google you. Um, and if they don't like what they see, they might expose anybody, the, not any companies, that a uh, celebrity. They expose everybody. They're just really good at finding information on the internet. So if you're going to be passionate about any cause, LGBT, Black Lives Matter, whatever it is that your company is into, make sure it comes from the heart um, and make sure you do your due diligence because if they find your Facebook and your personal Facebook is saying something different, they will put you out there or they just won't buy from you. That's just how this generation thinks. Um, they also are very, very open to speaking out. They're open to getting their points across. They're opening to challenging the system, challenging companies, challenging all kinds of things, so on and so forth. And last but not least, Gen Z spending is in the billions. So again, I was saying there are two types of Generation Z ads you can do. You can do advertising for their parents or caregivers. Caregivers meaning grandma, grandpa, you know, their brother, their mom, their dad, their stepdad, you know, the blended family advertisements you can do too. That's a big thing that's going on with Gen Z is a lot of them are in blended families um, or their godmother or their godfather and so on and so forth. Um, and then they spend a lot of time on social media. So a lot of them spend time on TikTok. They spend time here on Instagram. Um, some of them dwelve into like LinkedIn if they're trying to get a job or get an internship, they're trying to be more professional. It's a very small percentage of them that live on LinkedIn. Um, and they're really into other apps like, um, I'm trying to think, it starts with an S. I don't know why it slipped my mind. Um, and they're also into Twitch, which is a gaming app. Um, so try to find the apps that they're on. Spend some time, if, if you have an, an idle account, spend some time, find out what their mindset is, um, and so on and so forth. So that's Generation Z marketing in a nutshell. This group is much more powerful than any group that I've ever seen in my life. Well, I've only lived a short amount of life, but they're very, very opinionated. They're very, very uh, strong in their beliefs. They do want to see companies that stand for something and they want to see it not just because all these things are coming up now with issues. They will go back into your 
Twitter and Instagram history and see if you've been big on these things five years ago, whether that they purchased from you or not. These are just things that Gen Z um, like. Um, they are very passionate about what they like and what they don't like. And if they like you, just remember, if you're not on TikTok, if you open up an account now and you're like, oh, I'm not getting sales. It's been a year since I've been on TikTok. I haven't made a sale. With Gen Z, it's not about making a sale. They just want to see what are you about? What are you passionate about? Uh, how are you behind the scenes? What do you eat? What do you like? Like they literally are very people oriented. Whether they're introverted or extroverted, they just want to know who are you as an entrepreneur. And the thing with TikTok is TikTok is a long term game. And I say that because maybe you get on a TikTok, your videos are not the best, but you're putting in the effort. You have products that Gen Z would like, whether they're, I don't know, food or retail or video games, maybe they're not buying from you. That's okay. Um, look at TikTok and Snapchat and all these other things as a long term gain. These teenagers are not going to stay teenagers for long. And I guarantee that TikTok will be around for another five, 10 years plus. So you're building brand with this age group um, on these apps where you might not get a quick sale like you can on Instagram or LinkedIn, um, but you're building brand reputation. These are kids or parents of kids um, that will be following you until they're 21. And so they see you on TikTok now, maybe they're 15 and six years, five years, they're 20, they have their own job. Who do you think they're gonna buy from? They're gonna buy from you because you are on TikTok or Snapchat now when the pot is hot and all of them are spending more time on their phones. Um, even during class, sometimes these kids are literally making TikTok videos in the cafeteria. I see some Generation Z that follow me, they're making TikTok videos in class when the teacher goes out for the bathroom break. So that's all I have to say about Gen Z marketing. It's a powerful group. Their spending power last year was in the billions, and I do believe that this group has a big future. So if you sell a product or service that can um, sell to this age group, just remember these uh, tips that I've shared. They're pretty powerful and great. Oh, you are the best in the business. Thank you so much for all that you do. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, I will share a piece of this video tomorrow on IGTV and upload the full video on my YouTube channel tomorrow around 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey Cosmo! It's funny, um, Cosmo actually is not a Gen Z, he's a grown adult, but he follows me on TikTok. We were just talking about TikTok. Alright everybody, I have to go out for dinner to meet a friend, so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, but I'll leave it off for five minutes. If you have any questions about Generation Z, uh, their spending power, their mindset, let me know below in the comments. And I'll be here for a good five minutes to kind of talk about um, any questions that you have um, and so on and so forth. So I'll just wait a bit. If you have any questions about Generation Z with respect to your products. Oh, thank you, Cosmo. I appreciate you joining. All right, I don't see any questions in the comments, but I'm gonna leave it at that. Thanks for joining me, Cosmo, and everybody else, and I hope you have a good evening. I'll see you next Monday on Instagram Live. Bye.